Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Tom, and back with a, a video here. It's been a long time since I've posted anything on the channel, and uh, life's been busy, you know, and it's been doing my thing, recording and, and things like that, and acquired some cool pieces of gear that haven't made it on the channel yet, but in any event, I'm a huge fan of, you know, rig rundowns or studio tours and things like that, so I think sometimes it's, it's cool to um, look at people that might be on a similar front as you and not to someone that has this big crazy elaborate setup but you know I figure maybe some people that have followed the channel over the years or whatever might enjoy seeing kind of what my setup looks like and what's going on around here so without uh, any further ado I'm just gonna flip the camera around and kind of show you guys what my sort of typical day-to-day -day home studio setup looks like and what I've been using to uh, do my thing and make music and all that fun stuff so uh, let's get to it. So I think what I'll do um, is pretty much just start off with the guitar. So here is the the rack. Nothing too crazy going on. There's been a lot of guitars on and off this over the years but we'll start off here uh, with what is currently on there. So let me actually put them on the floor to give you a better a better look at what we got here. So this guy is my 2017 PRS S2 single cut uh, I've actually acquired this through the guitar shop I now work at, Ish Guitars in Syracuse. It's really, really cool. It's a, a one-off in a neon finish. And um, it actually has, uh, there was a Tremonti set in here. I actually went ahead and put a PRS metal in the bridge. And we still have the Tremonti in the neck position. Um, yeah, it's fully rewired. We put all, all the all new wiring and pots and stuff in it and did like the full sort of US spec on it. It's really really cool guitar. That one's set up to drop B. Just a uh, absolute beast with the stop tail on there. So that's kind of like the heaviest guitar that I own currently. So if I want to do something that's a little little heavier, chuggier, I usually gravitate towards this guy here. So this guy I've actually had uh, the longest as far as PRS's are concerned. But this is my uh, 2016 PRS CE 24 really really cool guitar this was actually the Sweetwater exclusive model that they had done uh, in I think they started doing them in 2016 and it had uh, cream pickup rings on it and they called it a satin blackout but didn't really sort of meet that description to my uh, you know as I look at it so I'd actually put the uh, I put some uh, hip shot o-ring tuners on there put the black pickup ring still have the stock 8515 pickups on there and I actually got lucky I was an artist at PRS for a little while and they hooked me up with these uh, they're just like a satin black tuner these originally had like the nickel uh, CE tuners on there so I ended up getting lucky they when they released the first limited run of the Dusty wearing between the Barry and me CE 24 a few years ago those are the tuners that came on it and they sent me some so that is that also a really cool feature about this guitar is it does have the um the satin neck on it it's not very satin anymore <laughs> it's pretty uh pretty worn in and i also <clears throat> excuse me had paul sign that at a clinic so it's signed and this one's been uh been through through the ringer man it's been a uh, a great guitar really really thin finish on the back of here but it's uh you know it's beat up in a cool way nothing crazy but I uh, absolutely love this guitar sick sick guitar and this one here is the latest edition I actually got this last month this is a uh, 2019 custom 24 USA core model so this is the first core model that I ever got and it's just a sick guitar you know you hear a lot about you know the PRS cores and you know how the CEs aren't as good and I don't know if I necessarily believe that but man you get into these core PRS's and they're just uh, you know something else entirely just uh, completely rock solid guitars man it's got some pretty cool pretty cool inlay going on here there's all my dog my dog's hair there but it's in an antique white finish totally bone stock right now I might put some covered pickups on there at some point but I really do uh, love the the white just really really cool so yeah this is uh, this is number one at this point in time just uh, absolutely sick guitar 
And lastly, uh, as far as bases go, this is the uh, only base I own. This is a Spectre Pro Q4. It's a Korean made Spectre, I think from about the early 2000s or so, but got this uh, used at a shop, did a little trade in action and picked it up. It's uh, totally stock, but it's it's a really, really cool base, man. It's for, for what I do, just uh, do demos and tracking and stuff like that. It's it's definitely been a really cool piece of gear. So pretty simple, but that's my tracking base. So this is where all the guitars sit, right? We kind of walk into the into the room. Just kind of have the cases over here, uh, some mic stands, things of that nature. This is my PRS 212 cab. It's got V30s in it, actually made of pine. So it's kind of a kind of an interesting uh, interesting cab. It sounds a lot different than any of the other cabs I have or have had in the past, I should say, because I only have two now. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Um, if you want something a little different, it's very bright, but at the same time, it's forgiving. It's uh, I think the pine sort of really makes it, almost warms the sound up a little bit, if that makes sense. But it's got a cool cool piece of flame on there. Nothing too crazy, but yep, that's the uh, the 212. Over here, this is kind of the uh, heart of the operation, ground zero, if you will. So this is my tried and true. Let's get the light out of there. Uh, PRS Archon. I've had this uh, for a few years now, and the faceplate actually got uh, sometime I want to say last year. But it's actually um, when I was an artist with them, uh, I had an issue with one and had asked if I could get a replacement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they sent me another amp, but at that point. When they sent me the new one, it actually, they didn't do the maple faceplates anymore. They were aluminum. And I you know, had to ask my couple friends there if I could get potentially a leftover, if they had any, had any leftover of the wooden faceplates, and they had this one. <laughs> I was like, uh, yes. So I snagged that, and this has kind of become my signature, not signature, but the piece of gear that if anybody has seen my stuff, they recognize this amp. But, you know, there's a couple, a couple little imperfections on there you know like things like that but killer killer amp below that is my bogner 4x12 cab i recently got i traded a uh, a mesa boogie 412 for it and been really really happy this is from a uh, 95 or 96 mid 90s cab nice and broken in english v30s and uh we got a 906 and a 57 down here most of the time i run the 57 but you know, sometimes I'll want a little variety, which is what I was doing this morning, and plug the 609 in. So you all know what this is. This is the tried and true block letter 5150. Actually got this, uh, I think it was about a few years ago now, from my pal Louis Torres down in the Albany uh, Clifton Park area. So if you see this, appreciate it, brother. And uh, it's different than the Archon. It's just that classic plug and go metal heavy just balls to the wall sound so it's a really cool amp it's one that i'll have uh forever or until it decides to explode or whatever it may do <laughs> but it's uh it's killer i really really like this amp a lot uh down here is very very simple pedal board situation i've got a polytune polytune 3 uh, earthquaker devices dispatch master this is probably the most recent piece of gear i have uh, and it actually replaced my Max on 808. Sold it just with the three three positions that you have with this guy, and I think it just is a killer overdrive. It doesn't squash the low end as much as some of the other tube screamers I've tried, so I really really dig it. This is a uh, ISP Decimator 2. Don't need to say anything about that guy. Just best I've used. I haven't really had a, a chance to try any of the the other stuff like the Fort and Zool and things like that but I really do like the uh, decimator a ton and then over here another Earthquaker pedal Dispatch Master delay reverb my favorite delay reverb pedal period I've ever used it's just uh, a gorgeous sounding pedal so if you haven't checked that out definitely look up some videos or give it a try you won't regret it and then lastly just a very simple uh, Audio Technica System 10 uh, stomp box wireless unit just use that live you used it for a long time it's been really really cool and it's uh never failed me on stage had it for 
probably three or four years now, and it's uh, been through a lot, and it's uh, it's been a great. Everything's been good. So yeah, very very simple board at the moment. There used to be a lot of other stuff on here, but uh, now that I've started doing the singing in the band, I just kind of really wanted to simplify stuff, you know. Oh, and uh, pedal power too. And you know, up here there's just kind of some random stuff. That's my uh, some artwork of my dog that the girlfriend had made. Really really cool. Someone actually did that by hand. Some influential albums up there. Alter Bridge, Sevenfold, Breaking Benjamin, Red, and then just like some miscellaneous stuff. I've got some boxes of things I've purchased up there. Um, these are the strings I use in Drop B. They're uh, D'Addario, actually baritone lights, uh, 13 to 62s, but in that uh, 25 inch scale, Drop B, the tension's really, really good. So, uh, love those things. So this is sort of uh, ground control. This is where I hang out, do all the stuff. So yeah, I'll start with the monitors. So these are Personas Eris E66s. Um, you know, I went with these for the sake of budget and also just wanted something that threw a little more low end without having to go too crazy and get a sub. But these ones are pretty solid, the MTM design. Really, really like them. They're ported in the front and not the back. I think that kind of helps sometimes with the uh, the bass throw in the room and, and all that kind of stuff. So got those on each side, obviously. Uh, let's see. This guy I just picked up for a uh, special project, and it didn't have a, a DI box, if you can believe it. But it's a uh, warm audio, passive DI. Can't say anything more about it. It's just killer. Really, really solid DI. I like that a lot. I use the... Uh, Audio Technica um, M50Xs. If I'm doing anything with headphones, really, really nice headphones. Use those a ton. And this is also a huge piece of my sound in this home studio. Is this guy right here? Uh, I'm a huge warm audio guy. This is a uh, Neve 1073 clone, and it's. Uh, I mean, I've done so many recordings plugged into this pretty much every time I mic up a cab, vocals, whatever, it goes through this. And it just goes into a uh, Behringer Euphoria uh, UMC 404 HD, just as a sound card, basically. <laughs> Nothing crazy, you know, but it works. does a deal. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's the setup there. Pretty, pretty simple. I got some cool lights. Pretty cool uh, painting that the girlfriend made that's You've probably seen this image online before, so she just kind of copied that, but she actually put some cool PRS birds on there, which is just sick. Really, really cool stuff. But, yeah, some more sort of artwork stuff over here. But that's the uh, that's the setup, man. Very, very simple. Um, nothing crazy going on in here at all. Just, uh, you know, small space. Make the most of it. And I actually had planned on at one point having uh, having this be like the video area. So I went ahead and put black material on the walls and it just never really panned out and I'm just too lazy to switch it. So there you have it. That's uh, sort of my very simple, uh, quick uh, home studio sort of setup, reg run down, whatever you want to call it, studio tour. But yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I hang out in here so much. I spend so much time in here, and I think, um, you know, it's uh, it's a cool, cool spot to come in and get in the writing mode and just like work on work on songs and nerd on tones and, and all that stuff. So, uh, let me know what you think. If you like it, click the like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I plan on doing a lot more videos this year, um, especially with everything going on in the world right now. I spend a lot of time in here, so I plan on doing some cool stuff. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming up in projects I've been working on that will be uh, being announced hopefully in the next probably week or a month or so and there'll be some videos on that as well but anyways let me know what you think if you have any uh, cool suggestions on how I might be able to improve the spot uh, pieces of gear you think I might like let me know I love nerding out and that stuff so thanks for watching hope I didn't bore you to death and I'll see you in the next one